Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about NIST Cyber Security Framework. It's also written as CSF. So first of all, what is Cyber Security Framework? So for this, let's say we have uh, uh, an organization. In that organization, there can be data, they can, there can be web server, database server, they can have router, they can have people working on those uh, all databases on all devices. So for that, and to secure this organization's data, their people, their devices, to secure them from cyber attack, we need some guidelines or we need some recommendations. And these recommendations are actually given in these cybersecurity frameworks. So let's define it that this cybersecurity framework is a set of guidelines, standards, and best practices to better manage uh, cybersecurity risk. Yes, to so better manage. And there are many different uh, frameworks in the markets uh, i have written a few of them here you can maybe google it there are multiple frameworks but today we are only focusing on this nist cybersecurity framework and i have discussed this in one of my videos now this nist cybersecurity framework itself is divided into uh, three main components so this is the picture which i have taken from their website here you can google this one and these three main components you can see from this pictures uh, are core, so this first one, and then we have uh, profiles, and then we also have peers. So these are the main three components of the framework itself. Now the first uh, component of this framework is core, and this core is basically composed of uh, five set of activities or these five functions, let's say five functions, and those five functions can help uh, organization to achieve their cyber security goals or, or to achieve their cyber security programs and those five functions are further divided into uh, categories so those categories are also known as cyber security outcomes and there are 23 categories and those categories are further decomposed into 108 subcategories and those subcategories are also known as security controls and this is the picture again I have taken from their uh, from Wikipedia or this is also available on their website. So these are the function which I was referring to. So these they include these five functions or these are set of activities here. And this these are identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. And then you can see they are further divided into categories. And then we also have subcategories which I will show in some in, in the later slide. So now these functions these the core functions they have the key outcomes which help in managing cyber security risks so this function we will have an outcome and those outcomes are basically helping organizations to achieve their cyber security goals to defend against cyber security attacks or threats first function is identity uh, identify so this is identify and this function provides a basis for an organization to identify its system, people, assets, data, and capabilities. Like if we have an organization, in that organization, we can have our system in place, like database system, let's say. And then there will be people who will be working on that. And then assets, so what assets we have, like data can also be defined as an assets. So first organizations, they need to identify that what they have they need to develop an understanding and on the basis of that understanding they can manage their cyber security risks so that is the first function and the second function is to protect so after a good understanding of everything which you have in your organization the second first protect refers to the development and implementation of appropriate safeguards to ensure delivery of critical services by protecting its people, devices, and infrastructure. So what happened in this identify phase, organization identified their, their maybe assets, data, systems, people, and then they need to uh, plan something by which they can protect all of them. They can protect their people with, with proper training. They can pro protect their devices, for example, with proper or appropriate password or policies. So that is the second function which organizations are recommended to uh, have. And the second, uh, oh, sorry, the third uh, function is to detect. 
So like we identified some of the devices, people, data, and then we protected them. And now in the detect phase, it says that they, we need to have, or the organizations need to have something in working in their, in their organization so that they can identify the events, they can identify the attack. Like we have some um, detection mechanism, intrusion detection, I think, IDS. So in this phase, there, it means there is a development and implementation of appropriate, appropriate activities to identify the occurrence of cybersecurity attacks. Like they need to be detecting some anomalies or some events, and then there should be security control monitoring. There should be some detection process. Like if someone is attacking their organization, then they should know about it. There should be some detection mechanism working in that organization. So that is, that was the third function and now fourth function is to respond. So respond means this refers to the development and implementation of the appropriate activity to take actions in response to a detected cybersecurity incident. Let's say even after these all protection and detection, cyber, this organization has been attacked and now how the organization will be responding to that incident. So we need to have some planning we should need to have some something by which we can mitigate them. So that is the responding function. And the last function is to recover. So recovery phase means, let's say we have been attacked or the organization has been attacked, then is there, are there any planning within the organization so that they can recover their system, they can recover their data or, or their system so that they can start working um, as normal again. So it means we need to have the development and implementation of the appropriate activities to restore services that were impaired due to cybersecurity incident or attack. Now in this slide, I'm going to show you all the functions. Uh, so we have, we define all these functions and within that function, we define that we have categories, 23 categories. You can see within identify function, we have asset manage, bu management, business environment, governance, risk assessment, risk management strategy and supply chain management, supply chain risk management, sorry. And within each category, let's say in within this category, we can have further subcategories. You can see here, we have these subcategories and uh, let's define that these subcategories are basically uh, referring to that what needs to be done in the organizations, what organizations they need to do. For example, here it says that organization's role in the supply chain is identified and communicated. But how to identify, how to communicate it, communicate, this is, will not be given in subcategory. So the subcategories is about what needs to be done. It's not about how it should be done. And then how it should be done, then there can be some informative uh, references in that framework. And by the way, this framework I have taken from their website here. So these informative references are providing broad references that are more technical than the framework itself. So there we will have more technical things and these technical things are the recommendations on, on how you can do the things given in subcategory sections. So how part is not given here and for how part of this implementation we need to refer to these inf informative references there. So this is the whole uh, framework. And after good understanding of the framework, an organization can develop its target security posture. So uh, maybe security posture refers to organization's overall defense against cybersecurity. It says that after good understanding of this framework, we can develop our security posture or what we want to achieve. So that can be referred to as uh, profile or the specifically target profile. And this is done by going through all the 108 subcategories here, going through all these 100 subcategories. And then within subcategories, we select some of them which are appropriate for an organization because organizations can be of different nature. And some of the subcategories can be useful for them. Some of them may not be useful or appropriate for them. So they select subcategories from here. Uh, which are appropriate for their organization, then they create a profile or the target profile. And then profile refers to uh, state of being. They help organization to understand their current cybersecurity posture and plan its future security targets. 
and so they are defined in profile and in this profile we have the target profile target profile for an organization define uh, describes the to be state to be state means what state they want to be in by looking at those categories or those functions and subcategories so it means what organization wants to achieve in future so that is target profile and then after that they also need to assess their current status so this current profile and current profile describes the present state of the organizations so present state of organizations cyber security posture with respect to subcategories or outcomes so now whatever status they have in the organization they will be matching all these things with the framework and after matching they will be saying that yes we are currently with respect to framework we have current profile like this and after having target profile and current profile they can see the difference and that difference are the comparison between them is known as gap analysis and after gap analysis the organization can plan steps to move from its current profile to target profile so for example what guidelines what implementation uh, what uh, strategies uh, or maybe standards as best practices they are already using in their organizations and then what they need to add in their organization to achieve maybe target profile and after this the third component of the framework is uh, about tiers and specifically about implementation tiers and this implementation tiers refers to the maturity level uh, they may refer to maturity level of an organization and they are based on the outcomes selected from the categories and subcategories so like say from implementation point of view where an organization is so that is the uh, implement uh, sorry yes there, there are the tiers implementation tiers and from implementation tier point of view organization can have multiple uh, tiers so they define where an organization is with respect to cyber security guidelines or recommendations so organization can be in one of these four tiers we can see tier one tier two tier three tier four this is also taken from their uh, NIST website so if the organization is in first tier then this is rough referred to as partial implementation and if organization is in partial out of uh, tier one then this shows that organization is not well prepared an organization waits for incidents and once incidents occurs then it responds so this is kind of reactive response to cyber attacks and they have ad hoc and react reactive cyber security posture and maybe organization has uh, very little awareness the people are very little aware of, of, of let's say about the spam emails let's say and the second tier is known as risk informed and in this tier, if the organization is in this risk informed implementation tier, then this shows that the organization may have procedures and policies defined to deal with the incidents, but there is no complete implementation of those procedures. So like they have something policy about password that what should be password policy, but they are not really implementing that. Let's say just a simple example. And uh, like say, sir, risk awareness in, is increasing our plans and resources are not yet um, uh, to the proactive point third tier is a repeatable implementation tier and this tier shows that the organization has proper procedures and policies defined and they have also implemented them but sometimes they lack in responding to events and happening in real time so that is repeatable uh, so it means the uh, enterprise is now capable of responding to multiple crises and maybe policies constantly up, uh, applied and employed and the employees who are working there they are also maybe informed they are given proper training from cyber, about cyber security risks let's say but sometimes they are not able to respond to maybe uh, to events in real time and the fourth uh, implementation tier is known as adapt adaptive and this shows that the organization has completely adopted a framework standard and now the organization is in position to respond to events that are happening in real time 
and they can also maybe the organization is in, in the status of predicting issues based on some trends so maybe they have some some uh, honeybees employed in their organization let's say so these are different tiers uh, based on their maturity level based on the maturity level of organizations and this was something about NIST which I wanted to discuss in this video NIST cybersecurity framework we discussed about uh, their three main components and hopefully this may be helpful for some of you and thank you thank you very much for your time hope to see you in some other video